Okay, Alex Hainsry here, February 24th, 2016, update on RV living by Alex Hansry. So in the last several days, I've um, put in quite a bit of miles. After spending some time over at uh, Blanca Peak, I felt the inspiration to drive up to uh, the Boulder area. And found myself in Nederland, Colorado. And there was a pretty cool guy uh, by the name of Greg who let me park basically close to his residence and spend a few days walking around the town and just felt that it was not it was not the place for me. Now I've been going through this for a long time. Some people why wonder why I keep moving from place to place. It's more a matter of and fortunately, we have lower gas prices, so this whole trip was only about $150. I'm now in Walsenburg. Uh, a lot of these adventures that I've been taking within the state of Colorado is looking for a sense of community. Looking for a place where I feel completely comfortable parking my RV in a residential neighborhood or something to that effect. Maybe a recreation center nearby where I can take a shower. Now, that last place that I went to had no shower. And it had no parking signs all over. And what's happening here in the state of Colorado is that they have had a shitload of people moving here since marijuana was decriminalized. And while I don't have a problem with that, it's created a backlash. Now, some of you are aware that in recent years, a lot of people moved to Portland, for example, and we're talking about gentrification on steroids. It's happening in Colorado as well. And so there is animosity uh, towards people in certain areas. They have an RV, and this is really everywhere in America. Instead of genuine solutions to homelessness, things to that effect, you have the criminalization of people living in their vehicles. Now, long story short, most of you that are long-term viewers know that I came back to Colorado with the intentions of buying land in Costilla County and building something in Costilla County. And we all know that things have changed. And so, yeah, in the last several months since leaving Costilla County, I've been all over the San Luis Valley and I've been all over parts of Colorado. And so I go to some of these places to feel out the vibes. And since I live in my RV and I have solar and a couple new golf cart batteries, I have this computer. I work for amtvmedia.com and bring a little bit through this uh, YouTube channel. And a little bit, just a little bit through donations. Thank you, the few of you that signed up for $5 a month. And I would rather, I would rather be putting all the money into building supplies in a home. And unfortunately, my life is such that that is not the case. So with gas prices being where they are, I mean, one forty nine, I think, was the cheapest. Uh, I have taken advantage of the uh, lower gas prices. But as far as traveling to other places in America outside the great American Southwest, I do not feel drawn to leave this area. I feel like I've been called here. I feel like I've met others that have also been called here. And so it's taking a, a fair amount of time and patience to find my grounding. Now, I haven't had a regular shower for several days. And... Being able to stay clean is very important to me. And of course, there's ways people can stay clean without having a shower, but uh, I am not intentionally going on the dirty hippie path. And so when I go to different places, I strategize and try to find a recreation center. Little did I know that in Netherlands, they had no showers. And why is that? To continue our conversation about the growing population of Colorado. Well, it's not just wealthy investment in Colorado and property values going up as more people move here from across the nation as they did when they went to Portland. Uh, you also have a growing homeless population 
And for example, places like Colorado Springs, Manatee Springs, you have a fairly dysfunctional homeless population with um, a lot of mental and drug problems that have congregated in some of these areas and the national forests. And so the uh, discrimination, you know, the, the stereotype of the guy or gal in the RV that's going from place to place, it's there. It's alive and well in Colorado. And so I take things like that into consideration when I decide to go somewhere. Is there available parking? Is there a overabundance of homeless people? Are there positive things to do in that area? Are there natural areas? Is there a recreation center or a gym with shower and, in best case scenario, a sauna? And that's, that's from my own personal experience. That that makes a better gym, gyms with saunas. Uh, because you detox those chemicals that you may be taking in from the road, from the things that you breathe, the things that you eat. Off and on, I'm on cigarettes and coffee. Right now, it's... It is hard on me when I'm constantly in travel mode. And I actually posted in a few Walsenberg groups where I am now, you know, offering my services to help someone build a home. And when you're in an area where you're an outsider in this day and age or in an area where outsiders are looked upon as invaders, it's tough. Most of you might respect my work, but when it comes to the general world, when I put my stuff out there and say, check out my work, I don't hear back from people. Uh, I'll tell you what was a highlight, though. It was Manitou Springs, meeting with a girl and her boyfriend and talking about the real Manis Manitou Springs and what it's really like there uh, with the classism and also some of the um, uh, cults that have been known to hang out around Manitou Springs and the energies those human and those of the beyond, the Garner of the Gods, that whole area, what a trip. I was there earlier today. Um, there were some kids that knocked off a 7-Eleven. So some police officers asked me if I saw any kids, any white kids fleeing on bikes. And I said no, and I actually stopped the chat with the male officer. We talked about a few things, told him about the war, uh, war on off-the-grid living in Costilla County. And his female partner asked me for my ID, just for the fun of it. Just because they were in an investigation and they made contact with someone. This is after three hours of a great conversation with uh, uh, Jessica and her boyfriend. And I told him, you know what, it's that type of a thing, since I'm not suspected of a crime, that makes cops look bad. And he disagreed with me, but I shook his hand, walked past her, and got the fuck out of Manitou Springs. So here I am in Walsenburg, parked next to some sort of a building that's like collapsing on a side street. And, you know, people can judge me all they want to. Because I'm, a, I'm an American nomad. I'm an American refugee. Uh, really without family to speak of and, and really with, with no roots behind me. The past behind me is no more. Portland, Oregon, uh, that whole reality. There's only the future. It's like, I feel like I represent the reverse of the Oregon Trail. The Oregon Trail, you had people migrating to Oregon and settling, and now there's like an exodus of people that are getting out of the place before it's too bad, before it gets just... People leaving to save themselves and their health, mind, body, and spirit, if you will. I represent that group of individuals that are from Oregon that have left that overly saturated, overpopulated region of North America, specifically the Portland, Oregon area. And so I don't know how long I'm going to be driving around. I pray that I find land and a place that I can invest in before gas prices start to go back up. I cannot continue just pouring what I do make from what I do into moving around. The positive is that now I've seen a lot of the state of Colorado and I'm in a better position to advise people, hey, you know, this area is not so good for every living. This area is a little bitter, better for off the grid living. There's a couple of the places that I've discovered in Colorado that I haven't mentioned on video outside of Costilla County. 
And so I think it's important that I continue discussing RV living in the state of Colorado and the American Southwest uh, because this message is reaching other people that may find their way to this part of North America. But in addition, whether you're in Portland or whether you're in the East Coast or whether you're in Europe, there's a lot of people that are benefiting from the commentary that I am providing on this channel, much of it outside the box about the grid of living, some of it dealing with the supernatural, solar flares and their impact on human consciousness, the coming third world war in my timeline. And so all this information and some of it I've been talking about for years, uh, this is the time where I have to really kick things into the next gear and continue producing more and more content at the, as things continue to develop on the world stage. But when you have no home and you're on the road and people won't even let you park at their place, you know, without something, you know, weird happening or people having, you know, their own special agenda, it's very difficult to be the best at what you do. Lord knows how much energy I've put into this whole Zen and the art of living in your RV. But it does drain me both financially and energetically, when you are constantly on the go. And it takes an unusually strong spirit to keep going when, as I turn 36 tomorrow, my 36th birthday, my birthday, February 25th, 2006, I don't even have a home. or strong allies here in this part of the country to where I can go somewhere and just rest. While some will see this and go, well, this must mean that Alex Yancey is some sort of a thief that he screws people over. And another person could look at this and actually see the truth. Because of the things that I actually talk about, there is some form of energetic backlash. And I have to use a great deal of discernment when people reach their hand out in friendship, use my intuition. To detect whether it is a trap, whether they know it or not, whether they know they're game players or not, or whether it is actually someone that is tapped in with what someone could call Christ consciousness or the Christ grid. I've met a lot of decent people on the road and I have met a lot of deceivers. And so I struggle with the idea of actually reaching out to my audience, letting them know the situation, how difficult things can be when you're constantly on the road and how it's getting in the way of me actually providing with you the content that I would like. And on the other hand, saying nothing at all and hoping things will just fix themselves. Well, things could be worse, and I am so damn grateful to be able to travel Colorado and New Mexico and other places, to be able to get out of Portland, escape from Portland, the Kirk Russell movie that was never made. At the same time, I would rather be building I would rather be making like five videos a day. But when people like put up this wall for whatever reason, fear, oh, Alex Hansen is into hot stuff. We can't have him using our RP. Guess what? I have my own internet. Some of these fears that people have are, are just above and beyond anything that I would ever call sane. I haven't closed my heart to people reaching out that are couples, but most of them have been dysfunctional that I have met. Meeting the, uh, the two that uh, took me out around old Colorado City near Manitou Springs, you know, things like that are like refreshing. When you come across real human beings that are not there, do create arguments and fuck with your emotions. Uh, with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close, and uh, we will see what tomorrow brings after I rest here in Walsenburg, Colorado.
and tomorrow is the 36th birthday, and I will um, be contemplating where I go from here.